بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدن ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أن لهم أجرا حسنا ما كفين فيه أبدا وينذر الذين قالوا اتخذ الله ولدا ما لهم به من علم ولا لآبائهم كبرت كلمة تخرج من أفواههم إن يقولون إلا كذبا فلعلك باخع نفسك على آثارهم إن لم يؤمنوا بهذا الحديث أسفا إنا جعلنا ما على الأرض زينة لها لنبلوهم أيهم أحسن عملا وإنا لجاعلون ما عليها صعيدا جرزا أم حسبت أن أصحاب الكهف والرقيم كانوا من آياتنا عجبا إذ أوى الفتية إلى الكهف فقالوا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا فضربنا على آذانهم في الكهف سنين عددا ثم بعثناهم لنعلم أي الحزبين أحصى أي الحزبين أحصى لما لبثوا أمدا نحن نقص عليك نبأهم بالحق إنهم فتية آمنوا بربهم وزدناهم هدى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all his companions, his entire household, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of us and to grant us goodness. Brothers and sisters, the reason why I read the verses that I have just recited, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the benefit of the story of the youth who entered the cave. The entire surah is named after the cave that these young men had entered, fearing the adverse environment and the tyrant ruler, and fearing being persuaded into doing things that were or would be earning the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I do know that when it comes to a Friday, we all get messages saying, read Surah Al Kahf, read Surah Al Kahf. But do we know? that the recitation alone without having pondered into the meanings of that surah would probably not achieve as we are meant to be achieving from the particular surah. And the same applies to the entire Quran. We recite it, it's extremely important to recite. But sometimes when the term re recitation is used, the non-Arabs feel that recitation means to recite in the Arabic language without giving any importance to trying to understand the words of the book and therefore we lead a life of misery because we don't even know that Allah has addressed every issue 
that affects us within the book that he has revealed and he has sent an instruction for us to go into the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in the same book. And therefore, we would read Surah Al-Kahf so many times every week perhaps and sometimes even more often than that. We may know it off by heart, but we have not understood that it is named after the cave that these young men went into. For what reason? We don't even know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the verses here and I only touched on the tip of the iceberg. I've only started reciting the surah. And when I got to the story, I decided to close there because the rest of it is for you to find out what is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Surah Al-Kahf. These youngsters wanted to be protected from the adverse environment. They had so much sincerity that brings us to point number one. How can we even begin to speak of the role of the youth when we have not spoken about sincerity that is required by every one of us from an early age? We should be inculcating in our children the issue of doing things for the sake of your maker. Because today when people say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know you need to do this for Allah. And the young children start thinking, well, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. But this has been told to me by some of the young children as well. That you know, we heard that Allah doesn't need this, so why should we read the salah? May Allah protect us. But if we interpret it to our children to explain that when we say Allah, we are referring to the worshipped one who has created us. Whoever made you, he is the one you owe your salah to. He is the one you owe your worship to. He is the one you should be engaging in all the goodness you have engaged in for. And he is the one you should be abstaining from all that which is evil for, which means for his sake. And this is why it's extremely important for us to inculcate this within the ye the youngsters, the children that we have, they are the leaders of tomorrow. If they don't have sincerity, then they will be doing things for personal reasons. And personal reasons, you get hatred, you get jealousy, you get envy, you get the, the love of, you know, being in the limelight all the time and so on. These are dangerous qualities. And this can result in destruction of people. You know, a few months ago, in one of the countries of the globe, we saw two people or a few people vying for a certain post. And because obviously lack of sincerity completely in the sense that it's not done for the sake of Allah, it's just done to get that seat by hook or, I don't want to say that because politicians might say, we're calling them crooks. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So by hook or something else. And the reality is, these two were fighting with each other, bringing up their personal lives and their other qualities and so on in order to get the seat. Listen to what Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahmatullahi alayhi did. We heard it moments ago where he didn't even want it. And this goes back to a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whoever seeks the chair, they will become responsible. Whoever it is imposed upon, Allah will assist them through that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. When we speak to our Children, it's important for us to tell them that whatever you are doing is for your maker, the one who made you. A lot of the times there are little children as they're growing up, they think my dad made me and my mom made me. This is some of the children, they think that. It's sad. When we have not spent the time to explain to them that it's actually the one who made you for whom we put our head on the ground because he asks us, I've made you. I've given you whatever you have, your health, everything is in my hands. I'm giving you, I have provided for you. I have set provision for you especially. You will never die until you receive every droplet of what belongs to you and what is written for you. And we should know that when a child understands that I owe my maker, my maker, certain things because he has instructed me, I've made you and this is what I want from you then we will be able to develop them into fine youth who look forward to the next salah. They look forward to the next salah because when they finish one, they say, but you know, my maker's given me so much goodness. I'm actually breathing. And this is why it's very important. And we say this to the youth. I'm not going to say this in any specific order, but inshallah, as it comes, we will say it. We say it to the youth as well. Spend your time going to visit the sick. You will realize the value of your health. 
One of the things that will happen, spend the time assisting the homeless. You will realize the value of what Allah has given you. Spend the time, your time going to the orphans and trying to uplift them both morally meaning and within their own selves to feel as they are part and parcel of the community and they also have lots of hope. Take a look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chosen by Allah, the best of creation to be one who was an orphan. Allahu Akbar. This is such a big, such a powerful boost for those who may have lost their fathers. The one whom Allah loves the most, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to let him grow up without that father. And after a time without that mother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our children. And may he use us to guide our children. So if we visit the orphans, we will be able to realize the value of the gift we have. And then we put our heads on the ground. Ya Allah, Ya Allah. We've put our heads on the ground for the one who made us. If you take a look at the dua that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read at times in sujood, when he used to say, Sajada wajhi, lilladhi khalaqahu wa sawwarahu wa shakka sam'ahu wa basarahu. What a powerful dua. My head has fallen prostrate for the one. My head has fallen prostrate for the one who has created it. That's why I'm on the ground. No one else, nothing else. This is the sincerity. This is the building of the youth. We start by developing a link with your maker. If it's not there, you have no role to play. May Allah protect us. Really, the prime issue, when you build the building, you cannot start with the 50th floor. You have to dig the ground first and start with the foundation. And people tell you, your plan shows us a, law, a tall building, 50 stories. Why are you digging the ground going the other way? But you know that that person needs to be excused because they are uneducated. If someone asks you the question, that question, you know they are foolish. So the same applies when someone says, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Really, really. I hope we've understood the point being raised here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the face. We are putting it on the ground for him. And we say, subhanallah, if a person does not have that link, what do we expect from them? What really do we expect? My brothers and sisters, we have so much hope in you. We have hope in the youth. We have hope in every child that came to greet us and even those who did not come to greet us. We have so much hope because you are the future of the ummah. But remember, if you don't build the foundation, how can you be the future of the ummah that needs that particular foundation? Subhanallah, everyone looks at their children and say, Ya Allah, grant us goodness, make this child successful. But have you ever spent some time with the child? You know, we come to a sheikh and we say, Ya sheikh, pray for my child. But my brother at your home, the only thing they know is the game and the iPhone and perhaps, the, you know, the whatever other box they have and everything else, you know, I don't even know what they are called these days. Subhanallah, every day there is a new game out. And if, yes, we are not saying that there is no room for some form of play. By all means, but build the foundation. Some parents are so happy. They just say, Subhanallah, that you know, these youngsters, the fact that they are sitting quietly in front of the television is excellent because they are quiet. But my brothers and sisters, there is more that we need to do. We need to spend time. And this is why we say we want, we have so much hope in everyone, but you need to build the foundation, develop your link with your maker, develop that. Bond with the one who created you. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, My head has fallen prostrate for the one who made it. The one who caused the hole to be made so perfectly where my ears are so that they were sprung opened and I could hear. The one who caused a slit exactly where my eyes are in the most perfect way so that they sprung opened or flung opened and I could see perfectly. For that one who made that, I have put this head on the ground. With his power, he created. Imagine, you won't want to raise that head above the ground. People say, I'm lazy to read Salah. But look, the one who gave you your identity, the one who chose your identity and made it totally unique. So much so that the way your hair grows is unique. Nobody from the beginning of creation to the end shall have a replica of the exact design of the growth of your hair. Did you know that? No two zebras are the same. No two giraffes are the same. 
ask me, I come from Africa. So the same applies, subhanallah, with us. When we know what we are doing, we look forward to doing it. How can we become lazy? We want happiness through the disservice. We want happiness through the disobedience of the owner of happiness. We want excitement in our lives through the pleasure of the devil. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Is that excitement? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So the first and foremost matter and issue is for us to be sincere for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we collectively, I know we are speaking about youth, but here we've addressed those who are slightly older as well. And perhaps we've spoken about those slightly younger because it is the combination of these that really would be able to, to prepare the future of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. May Allah bless us, our children, our offspring, and may He make us from those who are the youth who can really be of great contribution, not only to society, community, and family, but to the Ummah and humanity at large. Something has come to my mind. What is it? I was seated with some people and we were talking about youth. And we decided we'll have a youth program. So when we had a youth program, you know, all the youth, they look at you and they want to ask, the, you know, the crucial questions, mashallah. When we say crucial questions, we mean they turn around to see his dad there. Dad is not there. Okay, I can ask the question. The reality is when we had the program, a lot of people with gray beards, you know, came in and mashallah, they were all seated there and people were embarrassed in the sense that some of the youth were quiet and so on. And so I tried to address the matter. Brothers and sisters, how old? This was my question. It was to the brothers at the time. How old is a person considered to be youth? What is the age? And we came up with an answer to please everyone. Anyone whose age is made up of two digits is part of the youth. That would mean from 10 to 99. Allahu Akbar. Because even when you see an 80 year old man and he walks up to you and you tell him you're looking young, he says, yes, you made my day. Yes. And you know, the sisters, when they're looking very old, you tell them you're looking young, you know, and they would say, oh, you made my life. Never mind my day. Allahu Akbar. But the reality is that youth goes away. Because the Prophet wasallam in a powerful hadith has mentioned that there are seven categories of people who deserve and who will get the shade on the day of Qiyamah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes. It's amazing. One of the categories is Shabun Nasha'a fi ibadatillahi ta'ala. The youth, male or female, a young person who grew up in the obedience of Allah. This means in that age where they are bubbling and bursting with a lot of energy, bubbling and bursting with so much power and energy where their mind is just settling down and they have sometimes doors that might be, you know, flinging open for a little while, depending on the wind and the environment where the devil comes in and perhaps makes them inclined towards some form of fulfillment of their own inner desires because of the energy they have. And at that age, they still save, safeguarded themselves. And they still made sure that, you know what? We are in the masjid. We owe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this. We are people who really have to serve the ummah and lead the future. If at that age they protected themselves, they deserve what they will get on the day of Qiyamah. And this is why we say, and I'm diving straight into another major issue that would definitely make you or break you. My beloved youth who are here today, like we said, we are all youth, mashallah. Your company and companionship is something that will make you or break you. If the youth are in the masjid, a lot of the times it's because of the company they keep. If they are in the clubs and the pubs and on drugs, it's because of their friends and the company they keep. And this is why, take a look, Surah Al-Furqan, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of it very clearly. Allah speaks of a certain category of people and 
he describes them as al-zalim, the one who is al-zalim. Al-zalim refers to many things. But the point I want to raise here is the fact that this person was led astray by the company he had. And on that day of Qiyamah, he will regret so badly saying, Oh, why did I not choose the path of the messenger? Why did I have such and such a person by name? Fulan means someone by name. Why did I have such and such a person in my company as my friend, as my buddy? They led me astray after the truth came to me. I knew what was right and what was wrong, but they made it difficult for me to adopt that which was right. And they made it easy for me to fulfill that which was bad. This is the bad company. So my brothers and sisters, when you find yourself finding it difficult to read your salah, you're in the wrong company. You need a little bit of motivation. You need a push. You need to change your company. Do not be embarrassed to start befriending people who are really those with upright character and conduct from an Islamic point of view. Subhanallah. It will make it easy for you to go for salah. Salah is a pillar of Islam. How dare we call ourselves Muslim and then time for salah. May Allah forgive us all where we find ourselves becoming lazy or thinking, you know what? I'll do it just now. That's the only thing Allah is asking you for major where 24 hours of the day you are being asked to give back 24 minutes. Amazing. You know, it's like zakah is two and a half percent, 2.5 percent. This is 24, not even 25 minutes. Let's say 25 minutes. Take a look at the 24 hour day you have. You are asked to re repay or to give 24 minutes for your benefit. It will really help your entire day. It will make you a leader because you get up on time, you sleep on time. You have so much in terms of discipline because you read Salah. Salah instills discipline, morality, protection from evil and so much more. But sometimes we find ourselves not bothered about Salah. And then we look in the mirror and say, wow, I'm looking okay. I'm young. My brother, one day that is going to go away. The youth that one day it's going to go away. The hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speaks of five opportunities that we are given. Which if we do not seize them, they will be overtaken by five situations. And then we may regret. Seize five before five. Make use of five before they are replaced by another five. And you would know. Today, I just want to speak about Shababaka Qabla Haramik. To seize the opportunity of your energy, of your youth. Before you, you start wilting a little bit, you know, it's like the plant where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it in the Quran as well. And it's like the plant where when the farmer sows the seeds and he sees the crop growing, he's happy when it gets green, mashallah, he needs to harvest it. Imagine he needs to harvest it once it's ready. If he leaves it too long, it starts wilting. It becomes rotten. It becomes anything else, but it is not beneficial anymore, except perhaps for something that is very, very irrelevant or something that is not the maximum value of that particular item. The same applies to us when you are young, mashallah, you have energy that you can use if you channel it in the correct direction in that which you will not be able to do later on. So the hadith says, seize the opportunity of your young age, that energy, the bubbling, and bursting of the energy, the mind that you have, the sharpness of the mind that you have. You know, when you are young, you can learn much more than when you are older. We find sometimes that the systems of the globe have kept us occupied in what they term education such that we are not allowed to enter the field at an early age. Today, some countries are, some countries are discussing the issue of getting the youngsters involved in whatever they are gifted at from the early age of 10 and 11. Why? Because they say by the time you graduate and you're 25 and 30, you are half spent. This is what people are finding out who are not Muslim. These are studies I am talking about. But when Islam taught this to us from the very beginning, then people say, oh, are you sure? You know, just because Islam said it, we found ourselves distanced. But now when top professors happen to say it, that, you know, we did a study on this and we did a study on that. And we found that the youngsters, they can begin to, you know, perhaps fly a helicopter at the age of 11. They would probably be better pilots at the age of 15 than a lot of the others who are much older. And these are studies in reality that are taking place right now as we speak. The truth of the matter is 
we have so much energy at that young age. Let's use it in the right direction to benefit community, to benefit people and to benefit ourselves, to develop the link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Learn as much as you can. We heard moments ago about Zayd radiallahu anhu and how he spent such a short time with such dedication to learn entire languages, mashallah. And it's amazing how we cannot learn languages to save our lives. Forget about the languages, but to save our akhirah, we don't even want to pick up the Quran. We don't even want to study. We don't even want to come early for Jumu'ah to listen to the Sheikh or to whoever is saying something. And you know what? Sometimes people say, oh, it was very boring. You know, it was really boring what they say. The youth of today, subhanAllah, they say, you know, the Sheikh doesn't know how to speak. The reality is force yourself to go and listen. If you don't force yourself, you are not going to build yourself. You won't be able to carve yourself out to the right shape. You know, carving, and I mentioned the word now, it requires a chisel, it requires a hammer, it requires various other tools that are quite painful if you look at it. So if you want to carve yourself correctly, you need these tools upon yourself as well. You know, I once heard uh, one of the mashayikh explaining the hadith which says people are like the mines of gold and silver, the best of them prior or in Islam are those who are best before Islam. And it's amazing how the use of the qualities you have, even prior to the entry of Islam, these qualities, if they are good and brilliant, they will help you through even after Islam. And these are the qualities that will really assist not only yourself, but they will be a beacon of strength for everyone around you, subhanAllah. But remember, if there is a mine of gold, you will not be able to benefit from it knowing that there is gold under the ground unless you bring earth moving equipment and you happen to hit that ground and dig in it, remove the ore, apply lots of heat to it and thereafter try and get out the pure gold and from there you want to add value to it. You need to apply more heat and poke it with precision tools in order to get your mashallah necklace where you say this gold no one will tell you it comes from the mine in Zimbabwe but the youth of today may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness we have lots of hope at the same time we need to remind you don't waste your energy your effort doing that which is futile sometimes we sit in front of the entertainment screen watching movie after movie and we know all the hanks and the panks across the globe. But subhanallah, we don't realize the time that we spent was so much just on that little phone or on, on the screen that had we utilized that time more beneficially, we perhaps would have been able to achieve much more than the average person out there. You know, one of the youngsters, I was talking to them and we, I asked them a question. And the question was, Tell me something that you think was extremely intelligent. And one youngster put up his hand. He really wanted to tell me something. And I said, okay, what was it? He told me, okay, there were these two guys on the train. You got to listen to this. You're going to laugh at it. There were these two guys on the train. They were very, very intelligent. What did they do? They used to duck the payment of the ticket. Oh, that's intelligent. They used to duck the payment of the ticket. You know what that means? That means when it came to pay, when they came, you know, the ticket was checked. They succeeded somehow in riding the train without having paid. Now, this is what is considered, wow, something great. These people are doing something good. So I said, how? He says, you know how? Two of them used to get on the train with one ticket. And then they both used to enter the toilet together. Oh, and then what happened? And then... When the guy comes in to check the tickets, he sees the seat is empty. He goes to the loo, he knocks the door and they open the door slightly and take out one ticket because this man would never have imagined that there were two people in the loo. So when he takes the ticket and he crosses and goes, both of them come out of the loo and they sit in their seats and mashallah, they achieved. What did they achieve? So now what happened? The youngster says, the story is not over. So what happened? He says, there were two other youth who happened to be one sharper. They noticed these two and they said, wow, these guys have it set. They riding at 50% of the price. We let's do it before them. So what they did the next day, 
the, the other two youth got on with one ticket and these two had already got on with one ticket. Now what happens? So the two, the new two rush to the loo before the other two. Now these two are sitting, they're sitting and they're wondering what to do now. But they were the veterans. They were the veterans. So because they were the veterans, the one gets up and he says, problem solved. What's the problem? How are you going to solve it? He got up, he knocked on the, lo the, the toilet door. When he knocked on the door, what happened? The door opened slightly and one ticket came out. He took the ticket and he sat down. You can see what has happened. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And I sat and I'm listening to this and I said, is this what you consider? Something worth emulating? Something worth following? Is this what the youth are all about? Thinking of how to outwit people in robbery? May Allah protect us. If that's the case, we inshallah have as Muslimin, we have a sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the lives of the young companions to learn from. They did not engage in this type of behavior. Imagine, people are proud because they outwitted one another in robbery. And they are telling you that was very, very intelligent. Imagine. Wow. I didn't even want to hear the end of the story. Because I told myself, subhanallah, if this is what the youth are up to, and this is what they're spending their energies and their mind and their brains with, then what do we expect? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and may he protect us from this type of behavior. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has definitely given glad tidings to he who spends his youth in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why when we look at the young man, he deserves it when he has had the energies. His mind may have inclined towards the opposite sex because that is normal. I hope it doesn't incline to the same sex, my brothers. The reality is, when it inclines to the opposite sex, that is normal, it is natural. But to harness it and to understand Allah has permitted you to fulfill your base desire, but in a way that is respectable, honorable and acceptable. In any other way, it would result in chaos, lots of uh, loss of peace, loss of contentment, perhaps fighting and so many disputes and disease, sickness and so on. So many things. So this is why Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam issues an instruction to all of us it has in it an instruction but it is in the form of an enticement an encouragement he says whoever guarantees me the correct use of that which lies between his cheeks and that which lies between his thighs obviously referring to the tongue and the private parts I guarantee him paradise. Who wants paradise here? We all want paradise, mashallah. That's why we are here, subhanallah. We all want paradise. You just need to do two things. What are these two things? Watch how you use your tongue and watch how you use your private parts. That's it. If you watch these two, he says, guarantee you paradise. And obviously, that would include using the tongue in that which Allah has instructed. Protecting it from that which Allah has prohibited. The same applies to your private parts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So if this is the type of statement that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uttered, it would show the importance of the protection of these two organs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us really to protect the tongue where people consider it very, very light to backbite today. What role are you going to play when you sit around and backbite all day and gossip and slander, you know, Allah protect us. Before they used to say, look at the women, they're just sitting and gossiping. Today the men are doing it, really. And they've become professionals at it. I've actually seen men, do, I've actually seen that happening. <laughs> Allah protect us. Those qualities were never known in the men before. But now because they're gossiping, they're beginning to say that as well. And the sisters are protecting themselves to say, no, we're not going to talk about Khadija and Fatima and so on in a negative way. I'm talking about amongst us. No, we don't want to talk about this sister and that sister in a negative way. If you have something good to say, say it. This is the youth and this is how we will progress when we eradicate the bad habits we have. If we are not prepared to work hard on the bad habits, they're not going to just fizzle out like you've 
popped in an effervescent tablet into your water and you're waiting for it, mashallah, to dissolve. That's not how your bad qualities are going to dissolve. If you have an anger, you need to work hard on it in order to eradicate it because it will result in your downfall. If you have a bad habit, say of drugs, without admitting your fault and without wanting the help and without working hard on your bad habit, it's not going to just go away. You need to work very hard. If you have a habit of lying, stop lying. To stop that lies, you will have to force yourself not to lie, no matter how nice it sounds. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. If you are being vulgar, you know, like we say, people love swear words. The other day at the hotel, I heard two people screaming at each other, loud swear words. And I opened the door to see what's going on here. Perhaps, you know, I was a little bit frightened. They might start beating me up here. And I actually saw them smiling at each other and hitting each other's hands. And I said, Naudhu Billah. They're just greeting each other. Look at this. And you know how they were greeting each other? The worst swear words. Worse than two people who are really fighting. And I thought to myself, is this the condition? Luckily, they did not look like Muslimin at all. Alhamdulillah. So if we soil our tongues with bad words, how do we expect the good words to come upon the same tongues? When your tongue is moist in that which is the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, automatically it will not find space or time to do that which disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's become hard on ourselves. It's about time we stop pointing fingers and saying that one's like this, that one's like that. I have enough qualities to work upon. That is my role. I need to work on myself and the, it will motivate automatically the others to work on themselves as well. I have seen so many people motivated by the good nature of others. And at the same time, we've also seen people who've slid or who have really dropped down by the bad motivation of others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our children and may he grant us goodness and ease. It's important for us also, my beloved youth, to learn, to learn. At-ta'lim, education, something very, very important. You know, knowledge is a coast that has, oh sorry, knowledge is an ocean that has no coast. Al-ilmu bahrun la sahila lah. Knowledge is an ocean that has no coast. You will swim and you will continue swimming. But there is an effort required to learn and you need to know that ultimately what your deen teaches you, what your faith teaches you, what Islam teaches you is what will result in the ultimate success, both in this world as well as the next. We cannot just think, you know what, it's enough. I'm a doctor, I'm a professor and so on. Today there are academies across the globe that are being established in order to provide the Islamic education to those who have excelled secularly. My brother, my sister, you happen to be a doctor or an accountant or whatever other field you've chosen, mashallah. We need you to be identified as a Muslim doctor, Muslim accountant, a Muslim plumber, mashallah. So when you attend to people or when you visit the homes or whatever you are doing, the mere fact that you are a Muslim plumber, automatically the people will be invited to Islam by your mere presence in that particular place to do a repair job or an installation job. Why? Because you were educated both ways. Your character, your honesty, your conduct, your deen. We compromise Salah because we happen to be in a public place and we are too embarrassed to acknowledge that we owe something to our maker. Whereas the very moment Allah might have had two people or a few people, even if it's one who may have watched you read your Salah and then asked you a question which would have resulted in them entering the fold of Islam and for you a constant reward even after you've died because of them and their generations. And you did not know that I missed out on that whole Salah. I should have just read it. Allahu Akbar. Something to think about really. Don't be embarrassed about your Islamic identity, my beloved youth. My beloved brothers and sisters, never be embarrassed about your Islamic identity, your name, who you are, what you stand for. People out there do not know what Islam is. Had they known or if they know, believe me, 
they will not only incline towards it, but they may become stronger Muslimin than myself and yourselves. It has already happened. And Allah has shown it to us from the beginning. And it will continue happening. But it's up to us to rise to these challenges and to make sure that we live by the religion of Islam so that people can see it. Today it's only the bad things that people know and they relate them to Islam. Why? Because sometimes we are not role models and sometimes we forget that we have a role to play. So that brings me straight to the issue of role models. The youth need role models. Who is the ultimate role model? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا What a beautiful example to emulate in that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the person of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, powerful example living example he came to us he went through so many things he went through much more than any one of us can say we've ever been through one person came to me and said you know i lost three children and i said muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam lost all his children besides one all of them male and female every single one of them he lost them besides one you might be thinking how the boys, the males in infancy and childhood. And as for the females, slightly later. But before he passed away, he witnessed them pass away. Imagine. So if you think you've suffered a loss, he's been through more. He was always content. This is why Allah has kept in his life so many things that if we were to look at them, we would think, wow, the best of creation. Amazing how he was such a content person and yet he struggled or he went through so much in terms of tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Still, he was the happiest, the closest to Allah. It does not mean Allah does not love you when you've suffered a loss in your business. But when you are distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is much more than you, that you can do to get closer to him. Sometimes you can be very wealthy, but far away from Allah. So Allah loves you. He taps you a little bit. How? Business burns down. Allah protect us. Allah says that's a tapping. Why? Because it's the first day in your life you came for Salatul Fajr and you raised your hand and you said, Ya Allah, help me. I've lost everything. Allah says, my worshiper, you didn't come to me during the time of ease. I had to tap you to come back to me. And you know what? I love this condition you are in so much. We are so close today. I'm going to keep you like this for a while. Amazing. This is Allah. This is the gift of Allah. This is why it's important for us to learn from the hadith. Get close to Allah. Get to know Allah. Develop your link with Allah during the days of ease. And Allah will come to you during your days of hardship. Amazing. We have hardship. But sometimes when we have hardship, we start questioning Allah. We question our maker. Is this what we are supposed to be doing? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So to educate ourselves, extremely important to know what the Quran is all about, to know what the Sunnah is all about. Like we say, the role model, ideal, the first, the prime Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is a role model for both male and female. Amazing. And thereafter, his companions, how many of us would be able to name 30 of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Very few of us, to be honest with you. But if I were to say, how many of us can name perhaps a few actors and actresses and perhaps a few sports persons here and there, I'm sure we would come up with not only their names, but names of even those whom they've had illicit affairs with. It can happen. And yet legitimately, who are the Sahaba radiallahu anhum? We haven't even thought about it. We don't even know their names. The other day I was speaking about Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, and I decided to refer to him with his name. You must be thinking, what is he talking about? And people said, but who is that? Who are you saying? Who are you referring to? Because they never knew 
His name is Abdullah ibn Uthman. That's his name. Abdullah ibn Uthman. He was commonly known as Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu an. His father's name was Uthman and his name was Abdullah. They used to call his father Abu Quhafa. So that is why he was known as Ibn Abi Quhafa. Allahu Akbar. Did you know this? But he was the best who trod this earth after the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Undisputed. He was the highest of rank of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. And may he bless us all. Those are our role models. Those are the people we should be looking at. The reason why people choose lowly and cheap role models of today is because we do not know the lives of the others. We don't know what they did. We've never taken the moment to try and open their lives and to read the story books. But we've read all the other books that have come out. May Allah protect us. We've read about every fairy tale there is to read about. We haven't read reality. And we don't even know who the Sahaba radiallahu anhum are. So how would we then have them as role models? But even then, it is important in society for us to have a few role models who have achieved in terms of goodness. However, when it comes to us, sometimes as human beings, we have weaknesses as well. You may have to take something from someone and discount a few things. You may have to take something from a person and you may find that certain qualities of theirs are not worth emulating. This afternoon, I was speaking to a few brothers saying, when we imitate, we imitate that which is correct. Do not imitate a mistake. You know, some people say, oh, mashallah, you know, this person makes beautiful adhan. Mashallah. So now they want to imitate the adhan. They imitate the mistake that person makes as well. Allah protect us. If that person is making a big mistake in that adhan, you can take the tune from them, you can take everything else from them, but you correct the error. So you become even better by the will of Allah. But if you're just going to take the mistake knowing that it's an error and not willing to listen to any correction in that particular case, what would happen? We would never be able to excel. My brothers and sisters, the youth, I have learned something from my own father who always tells me, son, never feel bad when you are corrected. Never. When you are corrected, thank Allah and thank the person who's corrected you. The youth of today feel very bad when you say, my brother, you know what? I think this is wrong. We need to choose a good way, obviously, of talking. But even after choosing the best possible way, according to us, you say something and they just discount you totally. You see that one, he's talking nonsense. He doesn't know what he's saying. But we want you to succeed. We have generations to build. Look at the prophecies of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They are coming true one after the other. And we know that it's happening. How then can we not educate ourselves to save ourselves and to save our family members and the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam? We ask Allah to protect us. It's important for us to educate ourselves. And like we say, without having the correct role models, we will end up having the wrong role models. And this now has to be addressed also to parents. My parents, when you show a keen interest in a specific direction, your children may end up showing a keener interest than you in the same direction. In the same direction. And this is why we say, make sure you realize the responsibility, the responsibility that's upon your shoulders when you have children. Many of us, we have children, but we are children ourselves. We don't even know what it's all about. Really, we haven't yet grown up. So what has happened? We have immature people who've given birth to immature people who remain immature. They call it murakkab, which means it becomes double and quadruple. May Allah protect us. I hope that's not the case with us seated here and with those listening. I hope it's not the case. We really need to understand how we need to change our lives when we have a family, we have children. Let's not wait for that day because that would, that would also result in an issue. Can I tell you why? If we wait for the day we have children before we turn, perhaps the decision we've made of what type of a spouse to have would already predetermine how we would act when we have children. So if we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as youth, we will be able to make a correct decision of a spouse. Spouse, who is your wife? 
Who is your husband? What type of a husband do I want? What type of a wife do I want? Subhanallah. And we need not only to say, what type do I want? But the type I want, would they want someone like me? Very important question. Some people say, I want to marry a very, very good person. But brother or sister, are you good? Would that good person want someone like you? Or you just want to ride on their backs? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Don't worry, a good husband will still hold you on his back and mashallah carry you a few miles. I hope. So brothers and sisters, sometimes when we have not understood the role as youth that we have, we tend to make decisions based on petties, based on the glamour and the glitter of the globe around us. And therefore, we have our preferences and priorities upside down. You know, some youth, may Allah protect us, the first thing they want, oh, I need to buy a phone. And whenever the next phone comes up, I need the next one. And then I need a car and I need it to be flashy and I need to pimp it. And, and that's the aim in life. So what happens? The youth end up living a life that is fake. They have not prepared for the life, which is the reality after death. But they've enjoyed a few years here. Then what happens? You become old, you start wilting. You know, your back cracks a little bit and then you can't stand straight. Subhanallah. And then you realize, you know what? My car, my phones, nothing has helped me. Like we said, you know, I said this earlier on. When we go into our graves, I think I said it in the Jum'ah. When we go into our graves, never ever will there be mention made in your grave of the type of vehicle you drove. I think I said it last night. Nor will it be made mention of the type of watch you wore or the phone you had and so on. No, simple. You are enshrouded in one shroud similar to everybody else. You will be asked questions. If you are conscious of this from your age of youth, you will by the will of Allah be rightly guided. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and grant us goodness. It's important that we respect one another. Brothers and sisters, we love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanallah, the mashaykh that are here have at least made an effort to be here. Let us try and benefit from them. Let us try and benefit from them because it is someone spoon feeding, really spoon feeding. By right, we should be making our own personal great effort through dedication endurance, spending our wealth and time going out to learn properly in depth knowledge of the deen. That is the minimum that we should be feeling in our hearts. But here we have people who've come to spoon feed us. This spoon feeding is a motivation that does not last more than 48 hours. Do you know that research has proven that when you are motivated to do something, if you do not act in the first few hours, it becomes weaker and weaker until it fizzles out after 48 hours. It's gone. So if you have it in you to change now, change right now. Don't wait for tomorrow morning to say, you know what? That boyfriend of mine, I still need to tell him that I'm breaking up with you. What is it? May Allah protect us. You want to mend the relation in your home? Mend it now, now, tonight. You want to resolve matters? Do so today. Because with us having matters between us that are unresolved, we set a bad precedent for our youth. And if we are youth, may Allah protect us. We will not be able to progress if we leave little matters affecting us every single day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. I know what I've said has been very engaging, but it's been very simple. I hope I have not made any one of you fall off to sleep here. I really cannot see the people in front of me due to the light that is shining on my face. But by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I know that I'm speaking to my brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. May he bless myself. I've only discussed very few aspects of the youth and I've added into it that which I felt was relevant. May Allah grant us an opportunity to discuss much more, inshallah, further depth, perhaps the next time we visit this particular country. And perhaps, inshallah, by that time, we will have, 
inshallah at least dug the foundations and begin and started off building the building that we would like inshallah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our shortcomings aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'id al-muslimin wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh